Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Dasadi Experiment by Frank Herbert, author of Dune. Dane reads. Uh, so as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs before I share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, The Dasadi Experiment. A swirling, vividly complex story set on the most alien and challenging world Frank Herbert has yet created. A brutal prison planet where 850 million beings are confined in 40 square kilometres. The Dasadi Experiment, a stunning evocation of alien cultures and of an experiment so monstrous it threatens the entire galaxy. We have some quotes from the Times and the New York Times here saying J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis are not in Mr. Herbert's inventive league. No, they're not because... <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay, so we're gonna start right at the beginning. Uh, this has like these um, uh, quotes to kick off a lot of the different sections, and a lot of what I've highlighted are these quotes because I think, I mean, they're there for a reason. You know, they kind of summarise bits of the plot, but a lot of them are just really pithy, really great uh, aphorisms. Justice belongs to those who claim it, but let the claimant beware lest he create new injustice by his claim, and thus set the bloody pendulum of revenge into its inexorable motion. And that's a Goatian aphorism. <laughs> And then the opening line, why are you so cold and mechanical in your human relationships? Uh, I get asked that quite a lot, funnily enough. I don't know, because I'm a robot. And a little bit here, I quite like, um, so, we did not evolve on this planet. The place was at phase with both Goatian and human. Dasadi employed computer memories and physical files side by side for identical purposes, and the number of addictive substances to be found on Dasadi was outrageous. Yet this was played off against a religion so contrived, so gross in its demands for simple faith, that the two conditions remained at constant war. The mystics died for their new insights, while the holders of simple faith used control of the addictive substances to gain more and more power. The only real faith on Dasadi was that you survived by power, and that you gained power by controlling what others required for survival. Their society understood the medicine of bacteria, virus and brain control, but these could not stamp out the Rim and Warren underground where Jibua faith healers cured their patients with the smoke of burning weeds. Bit of the old devil's lettuce. And uh, a great line here, which is very true as well. Uh, McKee was reminded of a cynical Goachian aphorism. To believe that you are free is more important than being free. I think that's very true today. I mean, we all believe we're free. Even though we all kind of know that we're not. Okay, here we have another great quote. Every government is run by liars and nothing they say should be believed. Attributed to an ancient human journalist. And here again, another great quote. All persons act from beliefs they are conditioned not to question, from a set of deeply seated prejudices. Therefore, whoever presumes to judge must be asked, how are you affronted? And this judge must begin there to question inwardly as well as outwardly. The question from Ritual of the Quarter Reader, Guide to Servants of the Bot. I mean, this is like with judges, they tend to give uh, harsher sentences to people of ethnic minorities. Another study has found as well, they do harsher sentences uh, just before lunch because they're hungry. Like, that's how subjective justice is, you know? It can easily be swayed, like you're better off trying to argue, you know, can I go in front of the judge just after lunch? And a little exchange here, which I think is very relevant. Like this is the same if we sort of send humans to Mars, for example. Um, it's not just the people who go that we're kind of condemning to that life on Mars. Ayrich massaged the painful muscles of his thighs, said, I remind you, Ligum, that we people decided with volunteers. Their descendants volunteered for nothing. Ancestors always volunteer their descendants, for better or for worse. Sentient rights, informed consent. The consentiency has been so busy building law upon law, creating its great illusion of rights, that you've almost lost sight of the primary's guiding principle, to develop our capacities. People who were never challenged, never developed survival strengths. And this is crazy as well. I don't know if this is true. I, I feel like it can't be true, right? Okay. He stared at her, caught by a sudden thought. By now he knew much about Gar and Tria. She answered his questions about them with candor, often using him openly to clarify her own thoughts. But death fanatics? Are these fanatics homosexual? She pounced. How do you know? I guess. What difference would it make? Are they? Yes. McKee shuddered. She was peremptory. Explain. When humans for any reason go terminal where survival of their species is concerned, it's relatively easy to push them the short step further into wanting to die. You speak from historical evidence? Yes. Example. With rare exceptions, primitive humans of the tribal eras reserved their homosexuals as the ultimate shock troops of desperation. They were the troops of last resort, sent into battle as berserkers who expected, who wanted to die. If they did want to die, that's just because of how much they're being persecuted, surely. Another interesting quote here from the Trial of Trials. 
Does the population have informed consent when that population is not taught the inner workings of its monetary system and then is drawn, all unknowing, into economic adventures? And uh, here we have another one there, the Dasadi analysis from Busat Documents. The music of a civilization has far-reaching consequences on consciousness and, thus, influences the basic nature of a society. Music and its rhythms divert and compel the awareness, describing the limits within which a consciousness, thus fascinated, may operate. Control the music then, and you own a powerful tool with which to shape the society. So yeah, um, I guess my problem with this, I mean this is part of the con uh, sentiency series, and I, I think I might have been reading them out of order as well, just sort of picking them up as and when. Uh, I thought the concept was really good, but the actual story itself was pretty dull. I mean, as you can tell, most of the things that I actually took away from it were the quotes at the start of the chapters, rather than anything that was actually happening within the narrative. Um, it's supposed to be, I think, like a sort of a fast-paced kind of sci-fi thriller kind of read, but really, I mean, it does a great job of the world building, that's very good. But it's just a bit slow, a bit dull and a bit boring, especially for this like, because I'm really interested in the issue of overpopulation as well, and this could have had the potential to do a really good job of investigating that. And it just didn't, unfortunately. So I would give this a pretty low 3.5 out of 5. I think I rounded it down to 3 for Goodreads. But if you're a Frank Herbert fan, maybe you'll, you'll have better luck with it. I personally found The Green Brain was better than this, and um, other than obviously the Dune books. Uh, he has one called The Saratoga Barrier, and that was excellent. So do check that one out if you get a chance. But yeah. The Dasadi Experiment by Frank Herbert. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Dasadi Experiment by Frank Herbert. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.